How's it going guys? I hope you're having a great week out there. I know I am. My name's Garrett and if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm going to start this video with an answer to your burning question and that is no, we are not sponsored by Celsius Sparkling Water. However, if you want a delicious and nutritious 200 milligrams of caffeine guaranteed to make you more focused and productive without the sugary crash hit up celsius this is not sponsored but celsius if you're listening i would like to be sponsored because i like your watermelon water anyways what this video is actually about today is we're going to talk about my Lightroom editing process for photography shoots and more specifically outdoor photography shoots. So if you've been following me on Instagram or even seeing my Facebook stories over the past couple of weeks, I've been putting out some shots of my buddy Jared for some clothing that we love from Tactical Pro Supply. We buy it, we wear it. It's stuff that we believe in and they are America proud and friendly. Let's go. So not going to waste a lot of time with talking head today. We're actually going to hop into the computer. I'm going to walk you through my Lightroom editing process. I also have a little surprise at the end let's go ahead and hop into it okay all you cool cats and kittens hopefully that is not trademarked and if you believe that carol baskins is guilty let me know in the comments below or let me know up here in the call card we're going to put that up there put a poll up there is she innocent or guilty anyways this is the first project that i actually have edited with my new pc if you want to see those specs i'm going to put the link to that video down below so the way that I edit, I really like to keep everything fairly clean. Now, yes, we're going to do some color manipulation, as you see, but nothing crazy. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is I'm going to make sure that I have my highlights and my shadows both set to clip if we go too far, which we're not going to in this example. Anyway, it's going to start off with my highlights, going to bring those all the way down, bring my whites down to give me more of a faded look. And we're going to act on that here a little bit as well. I'm going to leave the shadows alone for now. Maybe bring, actually, let's just go ahead and bring those up a smidge. Blacks, I'm going to bring those down. And like we said, we don't want to clip anything, so that's about right. Texture, not really going to touch that. Now, clarity, I'm going to put that up to about plus 15. And all that clarity does really is sucks color out. It desaturates really and adds some contrast, which we've already done. We've had, oh, actually, we haven't. Let's go ahead and throw some contrast in there. About plus 25. So that's looking pretty good right now. Gonna raise those blacks just to keep everything from clipping once again. Vibrance, the vibrant slider is excellent. So it's really like a smart saturation slider. So we're gonna push that to about plus, let's say about plus 20. Uh, right there, that's looking pretty good. Saturation, not really gonna touch it a lot. We may go, you know, plus five on that just to add some more saturation. We'll play with that later. Coming down to the tone curves, I always do a simple S curve just to throw some more contrast in there. So we're gonna lower the shadows a little bit, raise our highs, and then we're gonna pull those back to make them bloom really nicely. Pull the shadows up to give us a faded look. Now we're not gonna go with a crazy faded film look by any means. Once again, we wanna keep this clean. You're probably thinking by now, well, none of these colors match up to what our reference photo looks like. We're gonna get to that. So we're gonna go all the way down to our primaries. Now I always like messing with my blue primaries here. So we're gonna bring that down it's about 25 minus 25 there and what this is going to do is this is going to make our blues have more of a teal color now we're not going with a crazy teal orange color scheme here we're actually going to deset that pretty much we're going to go to about negative 35 on the saturation for the blues so once again it's going to have a teal look but nothing crazy and what you'll see is over in our reference photo here we actually don't really have any blue and i'm going to show you that here in a second that's really the only slider that i mess with sometimes i'll push the reds a little bit we may do that because they're looking a little bit yellow so we'll go minus five there and go minus seven on saturation but this right here is where the magic happens our hsl sliders so we're going to start off with red i'm actually going to push red over a tad more to the red side versus orange with the orange it's going to get pushed as well now we don't want it to look crazy red but we also don't want it to look yellow so i'm trying to really match this flag up here so I'm going to push that over a little bit more, and that's looking good right there. The yellows, I'm going to push them to the orange side. My greens, I'm actually going to push them to the yellow. You'll see why here in a second. Going over to the saturation, I'm going to leave red where it's at for now. Now with orange, we're actually going to pull it back to where it looks pretty natural, and I think that looks good on Jared's skin right there. Yellow, we're going to bring it down, and now you're seeing where the colors are starting to match up. We're starting to really pull the saturation out of those to give them those nice earthy olive tones in the foliage back there. I'm going to do the same thing with the greens. We don't want to go too crazy with it because we do still want it to have some color. I'm going to go back right there. And maybe come up here to the greens and adjust the hue on them a little bit. There we go. Now we have more of a green look. 
Gonna bring back the saturation again, bring it down. Okay, going down to aqua, we're gonna take the aqua out. We're gonna bring the blue down as well. So now we're really starting to get a match up with what we've got over here on the left. And that's actually looking pretty close. I'm gonna mess with the greens a little bit more because they are looking a little too green over there on the right. And with the yellow, I'm gonna bring that over towards the green. Now our foliage is matching up nicely. And honestly, guys, this is what I would consider pretty close to done. I mean, minus a few things. We're gonna bring the sharpness down there, do our profile corrections, and add some vignette. Now, don't go crazy on the vignette. Once again, this is something that we wanna keep fairly clean. So let's just go minus 25. I'm gonna feather this to about 70. That way it's not showing up in our watch. You don't want your vignette to show up in your watch, especially if they're in the clouds. I'm going to keep that minus 25. And like I said, that's looking pretty good. Uh, the only thing left to do from there is maybe go up and bring your blacks down a tad just to make that hat really pop. Raise the shadows. And that's good to go. I, I think that's a good image right there. So here's where we started. And now we're looking like our reference photo. All right guys, so that is my process. And quick disclaimer, my process is not the absolute be all end all of Lightroom editing. I'm not a professional, I do it for fun, but I love editing photos. It's something that just gives me a nice release. However, I hope this was helpful to you if you're beginning your product photography journey or just your photography journey in general. Um, you know, Lightroom is an excellent program for editing, for coloring, everything like that, along with a few others. So you don't have to have Lightroom to get started. Just go shoot photos, have fun with it, learn your camera because a lot of things things that people talk about like fixing and post and stuff like that can be prevented when you shoot in camera. So talking about the surprise that I have for you guys, I am actually going to leave a link down for a preset to that look right there. So it's something that you can click and drag onto your image. Now I will say this, make sure your image is properly exposed. You have your white balance set and everything where it will look like trash. Using a LUT is not a replacement for having good photos in camera. It just accentuates what you've already shot. Anyways, with all that being said, like this video if you got value out of it, subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. I love growing this community here on YouTube. Y'all have a good one and we'll see you in the next.